Hi folks, Bill here from Gen T. Today I'm going to show you different ways to brew Fenhuang Danzong, also known as Phoenix Oolong Tea. I'll be brewing Danzong in Gong Fu style using a Gaiwan and a Yixing teapot, and also in a Western style teapot, which will give you an idea on how to brew this tea in a travel mug or a thermos when you're on the go. Fenhuang Danzong is an Oolong Tea hailing from Guangdong province in China. Fenhuang is the name of the specific region where this tea is from, and Danzong refers to the tea cultivar name. Fenhuang Danzong is an oolong with straight leaves, renowned for its complex and pronounced floral notes. I'm going to use Fenhuang Danzong Rogue Xiang to demonstrate in this video, but you can totally use the parameters in this video for any type of Danzong tea. And as usual, all teas are different and people have different preferences. So no matter what tea you are brewing, just adjust according to your liking. Before you hit rewind to make sure I really said rogue, isn't that a yen cha? Don't worry, I'm going to explain that shortly. But first, let's get some tea started. Here's what you'll need to brew Fenhuang Danzong in a Gaiwan a gaiwan, of course, and a sharing pot and a teacup. A filter is a nice to have if you don't like any leaves in your cup, but I'm going to skip that today. The size of gaiwan I choose gives more than a cup for each brew, so feel free to add more cups for whoever else you're having tea with. And I do hope you're making tea with your family and friends regularly. After all, that is what tea is all about. I always warm up the vessel before brewing, then toss the leaf in. We'll generously fill the gaiwan until it's about two-thirds full of fenhuang danzong, so that once the tea expands, the gaiwan will be nearly full of leaf. Whoops, get back in there. No leaves can escape from my gaiwan. Mmm, I can smell that distinctive aroma already. As usual, I'll give the tea a short rinse. This will encourage the leaves to loosen up and prepare them for our first infusion. If you're just getting into Gong Fu tea brewing and found this rinse or washing step confusing, we have a video explaining why we rinse tea and which teas need this step and whatnot. Once the rinse water is out, we'll dive right back in. The first infusion is going to be quick as the rinse infusion has already prepped the tea for the official brew. Again, we're using liquor color as our guide as to when this infusion is ready to come out. The more you do this, the more you'll develop an instinct or an intuition about when the tea is ready. To brew straight shaped oolong and gong fu tea style, oftentimes you'll find that the initial fru Whoa. <laughs> you'll find that the initial few brews are pretty much flash brews meaning you pour the tea out almost as soon as it gets into the gaiwan. If it's your first time here, we dedicate ourselves to providing you with quality information about Chinese tea and tea culture. If you like the channel, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up or share it with your tea friends. It really means a lot to us. The Fenhuang Mountains are where Fenhuang Densong comes from. There are many mountains over a thousand meters high in the Fenhuang Mountain Range, among which is Wudong Mountain, the birthplace of Fenhuang Danzong. The unique landscape, nutritious, rich soil, and the year-round fog hugging the top half of the mountain make Wudong Mountain the ideal terroir for exquisite tea. It has a one-of-a-kind taste that is unmistakable for those who are familiar with Wudong Danzong. It is also home to the oldest Dentong trees that have ever been discovered. All these make Wudong Dentong the undisputed king of Dentong.
This tea is good for more infusions. Just add 20 to 30 seconds for each successive infusion until you find the tea is worn out. I decided to brew eight infusions for this round as I'll be demonstrating more ways of brewing. Let's move on to brewing in a lot of people's favorite vessel for Fenhuang Densong. Okay, maybe it's just my favorite vessel. Actually, let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite vessel for Densong? Anyway, ta-da, the Yixing teapot is mine. These are more than just adorable little teapots too. They provide fantastic heat retention and slightly enhance the flavor profile of the tea. So you'll need a Yixing teapot and some teacups and also a sharing pot. Again, we're aiming to have the teapot just about full of leaf once it expands, so I'll use the same two-third full technique that I used for the Gaiwan. Of course, it can be a little harder to tell in the dark interior of a teapot, but we'll find a way to get close to our optimal leaf amount. We're not making delicate pastries here, so there's definitely margin for some error. Don't worry too much about it, just get as close as you can. Similar to Gaiwan brewing, we'll pretty much be flash infusing until we notice the leaf starts to slow down. Dansong means single bush. In old times, the tea was harvested, processed, and sold by each individual bush because every single tree had its unique flavor, and hence the term Dansong. Not until the last century did people start to propagate the plants from cuttings. This development helped Dansong increase harvest quantity, making it possible for more people to enjoy this delicious tea. You often see Fenhuang Dansong tea labels followed by its aroma, or in Mandarin, xiang. Milan xiang, honey orchid aroma. Yasha xiang, duck shit aroma. The 10 traditional Fenhuang Dansong aroma types are Milan xiang, Zhilan xiang, Huangzhi xiang, Guihua xiang, Rogui xiang, Yulan xiang, Mo Li xiang, Xingren xiang, Jiangmu xiang, and Yu Lai Xiang. You don't need to remember them, but it's convenient to know that if you see some Chinese words followed by Xiang, it means the aroma type of the Dan Song. But don't mistake this with scented or flavored tea, like blueberry tea or milk oolong. Fenhuang Dan Song is not a flavored tea, and it features a complexion of flavors and notes. Milan Xiang, Xingren Xiang, those only mean that the tea has more of, not only that note. It's usually differentiated by the first three infusions. The later infusions start to show the similarities of different aromatypes. 
Because in the end, they're all from the same cultivar. Today's tea is a Rogue Xiang Dan Song, featuring the characteristic cinnamon notes. It's very different from rock tea Rogue As a Dan Song, it still has the signature Dan Song floral aroma with some sweetness, but also with some spicy teases in the early infusions. On the run from the Mongolian army, Bing, the last emperor of Song, was so thirsty one day, but the supply for the crew was very tight. Still a child at the time, he cried and cried for water. Suddenly, a phoenix flew by and dropped a beautiful branch right in front of him, and then disappeared. He recognized the plant as tea and started to chew on the leaves to quench his thirst. Such a refreshing, wonderful taste, such a good tea. He also shared the leaves with his fellow officials and gave the seeds on the branch for the locals to grow. This is how Fenhuang Dansong tea started. A fun legend indeed, it does reveal the deep connection between the Song Dynasty and Fenhuang Dansong tea. Even until today, the Song Dynasty, a dynasty that is almost a thousand years old, still has a special place in the hearts of the locals. Sometimes you might hear the word Song Zhong when talking about Fenhuang Dan Song. Song Zhong means Song Dynasty heritage. Song Zhong is the name or say the title given to the oldest Dan Song tree to honor its old age, around 900 years old. However, the tree died in the 1920s. The name was passed on to other younger survivors and other tea plants from their cuttings Nowadays, Songzhong is a common term that may or may not be actually related to those ancient trees. As always, we suggest enjoying the tea itself and don't be overly concerned about the labels. You may have noticed that the fourth infusions of my Gaiwan and Tea Prop Brewing are both slightly deeper colors than the rest of the steeps. It's because I had to refill and boil a new kettle. So if you take a break from tea brewing while the tea is still quite fresh, you might want to shorten the infusion time compared to how you would brew it normally. We ended up getting eight infusions for this great tea. For brewing in a western teapot, we use our trusty cold brew vessel that we exclusively use for hot brew every day. The tea stains on the wall are proof, so just humor us and pretend that this is a teapot. If you're using this method for your travel mug brewing, you are on the right track. Just swig away when the tea's cool enough. Let's toss the leaf into the teapot or the travel mug and add the boiling water. So we rinsed the tea in both Gaiwan and Yixing teapot brewing, but we won't be rinsing the leaf here. The primary reason for rinsing the leaf before is to loosen the leaf up because they are whole leaves not cut up into pieces like tea bags. If you prefer not rinsing the tea leaves when doing Gongfu brewing, your first infusion will be longer. Considering the Gongfu brewing leaf to water ratio, that will pull out slightly more bitterness and astringency. So we do recommend a rinse for those methods. 
For Western teapot brewing, the leaf will obviously be sitting there the whole time, so we are tuning our leaf amount to minimize bitterness and astringency. Not to mention, our conceptual teapot is a bit tricky to do a rinse with. Once the liquor reaches our desired color, the tea is ready. Another indicator is that the leaves have all sunk to the bottom. Pour yourself some tea and enjoy. And that, my friends, is how to brew Fenhuang Dansong in a Gaiwan, a Yixing teapot, and a Western teapot. We love hearing from you, so please leave a comment and let us know which tea you want us to brew next, and don't be shy if you have questions. Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up if this video is helpful to you. I'm Phil from Gen Tea, and until next time, keep steeping!